With the recent developments on both the manga and the highly popular season 2 of the anime, Jujutsu Kaisen's popularity has skyrocketed into an all-time high, easily making it amongst the most recognizable anime of not just of recent times, but arguably of all time. Now, with every piece of media that gains this level of popularity, it's going to attract some harsh critics. Whether those criticisms are justified or just there to try and belittle the series, it's there regardless. And some of the criticisms that I've seen popping up online as of recent has been the discussion surrounding the manga's art style. Plenty of people on Twitter have started questioning Gege Akutami's illustrative abilities, saying that the art is too rough and cluttered at times. And while it is easy to swat these opinions away and invalidate these criticisms, as nothing ever good comes from Twitter, or X, God, do people actually call it that? I still wanted to dive right into the elephant's foot and see if there's actual validity in some of these complaints. And by compiling and reading a bunch of these criticisms, I have found the three common or popular censors about the Jujutsu Kaisen manga. Those three being line work, paneling, and the degradation of Gege Akatami's art. Now with that out of the way, let's start with point number one. The line work. Now from what I've seen is that according to the very kind people at Twitter, Jujutsu Kaisen's line work doesn't look good to them because the line work looks like chicken scratch. Even in the beginning chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen, at the time where the drawings were at its most minimalistic and polished, it still had this ununiform lines instead of the clean smooth strokes that most mangaka used in their approach to line work. Gege uses a more sharper and sketchier approach. Shadows are substituted with cross hatching. Speed and power is conveyed with these Nakamura like smears instead of a stretched out circular shape. And sometimes lines wouldn't even be connected with each other. And while you can affix these artistic choices to come across as more amateurish, especially compared to other Shonen Jump titles, but at the end of the day, this style of line work is what makes the Jujutsu Kaisen manga Jujutsu Kaisen. You can choose to hate it if you want. I'm not going to try and convince you that your feelings are wrong, but personally for me, I love this approach as it gives the Jujutsu Kaisen manga its own identity. Everyone has their own way to convey their drawings, and while it is more universally accepted to have clean and uniformed illustrations, I just cannot in good faith say that Gege's more rough and rugged approach is objectively bad. You can use the messier approach to line work to really push the boundaries, experiment with your character art, and have way more dynamic fight scenes. And I'd rather have that than stiff and awkward looking drawings. Panels, the backbone, the thing that gives a manga structure and what can easily make or break a manga for the readers. As paneling is used to convey narrative information or action, the best mangakas in the world knows how to make clear and comprehensible sequences of panels, as the readers do need to know what's happening to be able to enjoy or form an opinion of that manga they're reading. Now this is where I actually start to see where some of the criticisms are coming from, as the main complaint for the manga's paneling is that at times it can be too crowded. I somewhat agree to this point that JJK does have its moments where there are too many things happening at once in one page, but while there are lows, there are equally, if not, even more highlights where Gege thinks outside the box and fully utilizes the medium that it's constrained by. In fact, let's analyze some iconic panels from Jujutsu Kaisen. The hollow purple panel is absolutely genius, as yes, the drawings are nice to look at, it conveys the action clearly, and it also helps that this whole illustration takes up a whole page. But what makes it such a cool panel is that the dialogue bubble on the center catches the reader's attention, instantly conveying that not only is the speech bubble used as a way to name drop the technique Gojo used, but it is also used to show the shape of the attack and the damage it did to Toji, as the speech bubble is placed directly where Toji got turned into the Apple logo. But seriously, that's not all. There's so many more examples of this creativity, like the panel of Sukuna using Malevolent Shrine in the Shibuya incident. Gege did something here that's subtle but very effective, as the sound effect kanji that you see in most battle shonen is placed on top of Shibuya right after Sukuna activated his domain, indicating the scale of destruction as the sound effect itself looks like it's cutting through the buildings. Gege used the sound effect as a way to show you cleave and dismantle, like, that's so cool! As I do see where the complaints are coming from, it's one of those things where, once again, objectively, I can't say it's bad. As I showed you before, Gege is capable of god-tier paneling and out-of-the-box creativity and storytelling. It's just that there is a major factor that's hindering him from reaching his full potential as an artist, and that is Shonen Jump itself. The Degrading Quality of Gege's Art 
Now, unlike the previous points where I only half agreed at certain elements, I actually am on the side that Gigi's art, as it progressed, has gone worse. Not the background art though, because the background art never really dipped in quality, it still looks as good as ever, and that's probably thanks to his assistants, so big dub to them. I want you to look at these panels of Yuji. You see something different, right? Yeah, he chonked up. I'm explaining this once again, that this is entirely my opinion and even though I much prefer his older style, I'm not fully blaming Gege's choice to change his character designs. Cause you gotta understand that being a high profile shonen jump author is absolutely grinding. Damn near impossible headlines and the pressure to maintain consistency for years if not decades. Having to publish chapters every week, especially on action heavy manga like Jujutsu Kaisen, is going to eat away at you. It'll mentally burn you out, and at worst, it will put you in physical danger as your health slowly or rapidly deteriorates. Heck, Gege has already gone sick due to the lack of rest already. So him changing his art style to become even rougher so he has more of a leeway to make errors here and there is excusable. And by also making characters have the same face structures with the blockier chins and bigger ears, this will also help him maintain his consistency with the character art as well. And while yes, Jujutsu Kaisen, especially during the culling games and up to right now, does suffer at times with the same face syndrome, it still hasn't gone to a point like Fairy Tale where I honestly can't tell who's who. The gripes I do have about this change in art style is that even the female characters got affected by the face change, so variety is lacking once again in that department. And I honestly did prefer the earlier chapters where Gege didn't use an excessive amount of crosshatching or lines for details and shading. I'm not blaming Gege, as you gotta do what you gotta do to maintain your spot on the upper echelons of Shonen Jump. And if taking some shortcuts here and there is the only way Gege can keep making Jujutsu Kaisen, then by all means Gege, do it. Now to answer the big question, does Jujutsu Kaisen's art suck? In my point of view, no. No, it doesn't suck. It's actually quite good. I just wish that Gege was in a better working environment so we can really see what Jujutsu Kaisen's visuals would look like at 120% of his potential. The Nigatin! Hey, so